Has anime objectively gotten worse than what it was in the early 2010s and 2000s? Because this is a topic I have seen often now. A lot more people are starting to mention this. And I saw a post from, you know, a very well-known animator in the industry talking about this subject as well. And I was like, this is pretty fascinating. Because I don't think that, like, most of the anime community think that anime has objectively gotten worse. I think that, you know, it would be a hot take to say it is objectively worse, but there is definitely a lot more conversation around it than what there was maybe three years ago. And I think that, you know, when you think about the current environment of anime and just how it is nowadays, it makes sense that fundamentally anime is different than what it was maybe back in 2019. And I've talked about this already in multiple videos, but it is very significant and very important to reference because of the impact it has made on the culture of anime itself. And that is Demon Slayer. Love it, hate it, want to completely ignore it exist, wishes you wish that it didn't exist, you could say it was carried by animation, whatever you want to say, it does not change the fact that Demon Slayer had a significant impact on anime culture itself. And ever since then, it's very clear that anime has become a lot more popular. It is more popular than it's ever been. And not to say the exact same thing I said in yesterday's video about the whole Disney thing with them trying to change anime and, you know, make it more acceptable for wider audiences, but it is related to the topic at hand. For instance, has anime objectively gotten worse? And what I mean by that is, is we have already seen a trend of anime now trying to be, you know, flashier. A lot flashier than it once was. And I think a good example of this is like projects like JJK, Chainsaw Man and stuff that, you know, obviously blow up in popularity. They're, you know, big hitting anime. There's huge communities and fan bases behind them. And it's very clear that they, you know, the community expects them to be high octane and amazing quality. And people expect no less than what, you know, JJK has had to offer or Demon Slayer. They expect anime to always be that quality. But that level of quality, when Demon Slayer arrived, when it came out back in 2019... It was a rarity. It was like a, a diamond amongst just rubies or sapphires, like a shining gem, so to speak. It was a rarity. But nowadays, a lot of anime companies are trying to replicate that overall flair and attention that Demon Slayer got back in 2019. And obviously, there has been some success with this notion. Think about what Studio Mappa has done with Chainsaw Man or JJK. But, the point of the matter is, is that one thing that really fits this narrative of anime potentially getting worse, is that anime definitely has the highest highs it's ever had probably in the inception of the origin of anime itself, in the history of anime, but also the lowest lows it's ever had as well. And what do I mean by that? Well, when anime goes bad... It goes bad. Like, let's just think about just in production standards alone. A anime production's always been bad, okay? Let's not act like it hasn't always been there in the 2010s to 2000s, even 1990s. It, anime production's always had some bad stuff. But it's very clear nowadays, production has definitely gotten more noticeable, and it just straight up collapses to the point to where, like, they have to pull in just so many different, you know, like, freelancers and just people out of different countries just to fill in the gap for, you know, finishing a project, so to speak. For instance, like what happened with JJK or what happens sometimes with other different anime. They have to hire people from Twitter to work on, you know, the set episode that is about to release in just a few weeks. And when you look at all these different type of things, it has become definitely a lot more common and noticeable for production to just go collapse. You know, the, the common individual a part of the anime community can easily see this nowadays but obviously it's not just about production issues it's about technique and one thing in particular that really shows this is this clip of spice and wolf and i didn't really notice it because i've been watching the spice and wolf anime the new 2024 and i've been enjoying it really liking it but when i saw this cross comparison clip that you know my good friend brandon posted here which by the way you know it's a little bit off topic but brandon has a series and i've been reading it pretty good series i, I recommend it it's a shameless plug for that but uh I, I might make a video on that very soon just wanted to reference that but anyways getting back on topic though um in terms of this sequence here, I think this is very important to showcase. The bottom here is a 2008 clip of Spice and Wolf, and the top is the new clip from Spice and Wolf, and you can just see the overall animation and art technique is vastly different than what it once was. Now, to be fair, 
animation and art has changed a lot since 2008 in terms of just how things are done, how things are processed with digitally, etc. There, there's a lot. And then you can factor in new animators and different design teams, directors, etc. There's obviously going to be major core differences on just how anime is presented. But it's very clear that, you know, in terms of style... You know, anime has shifted from this style from 2008 to more of this modern roundish look that you see in 2024. And also, the colors are way more vibrant in the newer anime than they once were back in the early 2000s. And I think this has a big part to play with, like, you know, maybe Demon Slayer. The Demon Slayer effect, I want to call it. Because Demon Slayer was very flashy. There's a lot of flair to it. And it got a lot of people's attention. And let's be honest, a lot of people nowadays, they need that, uh, that dopamine flare. They need that dopamine hit to where they're just constantly having something flash into their brain and they could just have that dopamine energy hit. And if there's a lot of pretty colors and flashiness, it's going to get people excited. And in this case, I noticed that there is definitely a trend of color palette within anime being a lot more brighter or light in comparison to what it once was. And I think one best way, or the best way to really showcase this honestly is actually the sequence at the end of this clip. And when Holo transforms, you actually see within this moment how the distinct techniques are done now obviously the quality is a little bit rough but I think it gets the point across the top is the new one and you can see that you know Holo's wolf form is perfectly in view with the lighting and everything but the bottom view it's more shadowed out and then you eventually see the turning of the silhouette with the red eyes now you could chalk this up to maybe the limitations of animation of its time maybe not wanting to use CGI or whatever but the very ominous tone of Holo's form kind of being shaded out not really seeing completely in comparison to seeing the form in kind of very brightish colors it definitely sets a very different tone than what it was in the original it basically doesn't look as ominous so to speak for her to transform into this like deity like entity so yeah i do think that also choreography of the original is vastly different like look at this holo turns around on the new version like this while the old version has these close-up shots that feel a lot more intimate with the character showcasing the overall expressions and all that and there is moments in the new one that does this but it's very clear that the old anime definitely had this choreography showcasing how close holo and lawrence were but how holo really did not want to show Lawrence her wolf form and scare him again and I think this is a very important and it showcases the techniques and different care and attention to detail to certain projects and how they are presented to the audience because the common watcher even myself would not pick up on this unless you see the direct comparison between the scenes. I'm not saying the 2024 is bad, but when you compare it to 2008, there is definitely techniques used in the original that might, might have been limited in some way, but definitely felt a lot more personal. Now, you could chalk this up to nostalgia or rose-tinted glasses. I know that can easily be an answer to this, but I feel like it's more nuanced than that. There is a lot more to this discussion than just nostalgia itself. I do think that anime has definitely, you know changed a bit in terms of how they do choreography because I feel with limitations of stuff animators try to do things in a very unique way it's kind of like how gaming is it's like the old Silent Hill games anyone that knows about any gaming history for Silent Hill the first Silent Hill game that's notorious for its fog the reason why the fog exists was because they had a lot of culling that the the game couldn't process the entire map in view so they had to put a lot of fog around the character to be able to hide the details that just could not be loaded it in for that old game but thanks to that that very unique limitation that they had and try to work around it it made one of the most iconic things of the silent hill series the fog within the town and without those limitations there wouldn't have been that just you know innovative moment within the game series and the same could be said for anime is that thanks to some limitations and techniques or differences it caused it to where they had to go extra to really get the moments across, maybe certain scenes or character moments across with just some personal shots. Now, I'm not saying new anime cannot do this, but it definitely is a lot more common to see an overall downgrade in emotion in comparison to its original counterpart. And I think what really showcases this is remakes. And let's get into that one. Anime remakes are definitely becoming a lot more common in the last few years. I think anyone can definitely see that. You can say that's a good or a bad thing, it doesn't matter. But remakes have definitely become more common than they ever were. Because you go back 10 years ago, 
remakes just weren't a thing. Like, they didn't really happen at all. It's just like, if an anime got an anime and, you know, it didn't get a conclusion, you were left high and dry. You're like, well, I guess I'm uh, I'm never going to get to see the ending. That, that's, you know, the No Game, No Life fans are basically shriveling up underwater right now. But the point of the matter is, is that uh, remakes have become a lot more common, and I think thanks to that, it's becoming a lot more obvious just the overall discrepancy between new anime and old. And I think that is very apparent here in this type of footage. So which let's get back to what uh, was said by this animator, talking about the standard quality has dropped. Now, I have definitely seen in the comments section of this post, there's a lot of people that just straight up disagree. But this is coming from an animator, and even though they're an animator doesn't mean that their word is, you know, perfect and we can't debate against them, but they do come from a place of, like, they know how techniques are done, etc. And analyzing things from old anime to now, they can see that definitely things have changed quite considerably because they have a lot of new people that's probably being hired in the industry that just aren't as talented or just do not have a lot more time under their belt that, you know, these old school animators used to have. Because, as we know, thanks to recent years, a lot of companies just bleed through animators. Animators are not paid right, etc. So they don't work like they used to anymore, and it's just a lot of newcomers, so to speak. So they're not as, you know, good as they once were. So I think that there's a lot to play in, you know, this discussion, but I think in particular, has anime objectively gotten worse? I'm going to leave it for you guys to decide in the comments. I'm curious to see what you think. Do you think it's gotten worse? Do you think it's not? Do you think it's just nostalgia from a lot of people, and they wish you could just go back to that? I mean, I do agree with one thing. I do think that... Anime does have higher highs and lower lows, and when you take a look at these screenshots, you can definitely see a core difference here, maybe not for the entirety of anime itself in general, but at least for Spice and Wolf's sake, yeah, I can see why some would not like the newer design in comparison to the old, as much as you might think that the design looks, you know, I guess crusty in comparison to the new design, the lighting is definitely a lot more bright and vibrant in comparison to the old one with the shading and lighting and the choreography and the backgrounds as well, you can just see that there was a lot more detail in it, even if it doesn't look look as uh, modern as it is today. But I'm going to leave it at that. I just I wanted to talk about this because it was a very fascinating subject matter. Um, I will say, though, if I think there is one issue I have noticed over the years of why people, you know, don't notice this or why people probably will argue with an animator over, over this, it's because most of the time, I'm not saying this individual did it, but most of the time people in the Sakuga community... They will point out things and say you're wrong about something, and then you'll ask what's wrong, and then they won't say anything, and they'll just laugh at you and call you a dumbass. That, that's pretty much what they'll do. And I think because of the way this is done, it causes a lot of people not to understand maybe how animation stuff works, because there is just this elitism that is within the community that doesn't want to give information to people. And then they get upset if someone spreads wrong information as well, because, you know, they didn't want to tell it in the first place. There, there's a lot to take away from that. That's a slightly off topic from the subject, but I think that in terms of this subject, why people may not think animation has gotten worse and might not believe animators is because animators usually don't explain it that well. Once again, I'm not saying this individual d did that or not. I'm just saying in general from what I noticed from the community that usually happens. But I'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching. Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. And with that, Chibi out.